Truth Unveiled here, and today I have so much to share with you. Let's just get right into it. I'm going to be talking about the UN and what they're doing as well as what your lovely military is doing and what they're getting ready for because you've been seeing very interesting and suspicious activity indeed, and now it's time to expose the evil for what it really is because I'm here at Activist Post, and it says, UN vehicles, mysterious troop movement spotted in Virginia, North Carolina, West Virginia, Ohio, and many other places and later on in this video I'm going to be taking you to some government documents so you can see exactly what your government and your military are vehemently pushing and what they're vehemently preparing for. Now, this was actually reported a few days ago, but as you can see, there have been many reports circulating around the uptick of U.S. military movement inside of the United States with the recent sighting of United Nations or U.N. vehicles being carried on flatbed trucks is now making its rounds on the Internet and alternative media networks. And these U.N. vehicles were spotted near I-81 near Lexington, Virginia, and were being carried by flatbed to, to a trailer. Now, of course, there have been many other reports of this in many other different places and many other locations at many other different times but we're seeing an increase of the military movement as well as an uptick of the military movement and you can see a better picture here and yes as you can see somebody actually took this picture so it's not made up it's not photoshopped it's time to wake up and see what's right in front of you but the reason I'm showing you this and the reason this is so important is because you need to see exactly what's going on and what your lovely military are getting ready for because they've been telling you their plans all along they've been telling you their plans and what they're about to do for the longest now but have you been paying attention and have you been seeing the warning signs ahead of time because if not well then you will be taken for a lube come martial law because yes when martial law is declared the United Nations will take over which reminds me of the movie of Amerigeddon the movie that they do not want you to see and if you would like to learn more about that please watch my link below so you can see more about that but it even says for the past day or so military convoys have been witnessed traveling both north and south with lines of equipment ranging from Humvees and troop transport trucks and tankers to military personnel following the convoy and civilian vehicles and yesterday I talked about more of Rex 84 and how they already have the FEMA camps armed and ready to go with police officers and officers already armed ready to accept dissidents and prisoners the question is are you ready but it even says interestingly enough many of the soldiers traveling in the convoy were seen wearing helmets an unusual procedure for a simple convoy in addition the convoys were carrying what appeared to be construction equipment why would they need to be doing that military convoys aren't the only thing we're seeing oh no because we're also seeing more cryptic things from our government and military and the special thanks to all of you for sending in all of your pictures and all of the very interesting and suspicious things that you all have been seeing and spotting on the road because this is a picture that was taken somewhere in New Jersey and as you can see it says special operations unit zombie response and not only are we seeing zombie preparedness vehicles and zombie warning signs we're also seeing even the organizations such as the CDC are even preparing for a zombie apocalypse and even have a zombie preparedness plans on their website and your government and your military even have zombie documents that document certain zombies don't believe me please check out my government and zombie apocalypse video below so that you can see exactly what time it is and so that you can see that this is not a joke because yes you are a sleeping zombie according to your government you are a sleeping sheeple and it's time to wake up out of that sleep it's high time to wake up now so you can see exactly what time it is and what they're really getting ready for because when I take you to these government documents in just a second you're gonna see that this is no joke whatsoever now, this was spotted somewhere in Iowa as you can see here are some trucks on a flatbed and as you can see these trucks look to be medical response trucks and the question is why do they look like that and why are they even there and the better question is why are we seeing an uptick with this nationwide why are we seeing all of these trucks and military tanks I've also done a video describing the military tanks and going into detail with military tanks that have been seen nationwide and we're seeing an uptick of this and we're seeing an increase of it and the question you should be thinking about 
about is why are we seeing an uptick with all this stuff? Why are we seeing this stuff everywhere and what are they really getting ready for? What are they really preparing for? Because if you really seriously think that, oh, they're just doing this for no reason. Oh, it's just fun and games. Oh, they're just planning all this stuff for no reason. I seriously suggest you try again and come up with a better answer because right now your government and military are planning for civil unrest and chaos and they're planning to lock down everybody and detain the entire country and put as many American dissidents or political dissidents according to them into FEMA camps into prison detention centers do not believe me you will after this because even government and military documents prove that that is what they're getting ready for and you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about in just a second now, I talked more about this yesterday in my video that talked about all of the state of emergencies that we've been seeing these past couple of days, especially two state of emergencies declared in California and West Virginia on the same day around the Brexit situation. Is that a surprise or a coincidence? I think not, because what are they getting ready for? But it's just interesting because I would like to reiterate this about Rex 84, Operation Garden Plot, and even Operation Cable Splicer, which is a test to lock down the nation, declare martial law, as well as bring in the military. And is that why we're seeing all of these military tanks everywhere? Is that why we're seeing all of these United Nations tanks on flatbeds? Is that why we're seeing all this stuff, not to mention the Jade Helm and the UX drills? Why are we seeing all of these things? Why are we seeing the military getting ready for all of these things under martial law and do conducting these drills, not only with the police and with the military, but also with law enforcement as well as firefighters too? Why are we seeing all of these things what exactly are they getting ready for what do they know that we don't know now what you're currently looking at is a piece done by scholar Diana Reynolds and it says the rise of the national security state FEMA and the NSC and I highly recommend all of you read this on your own time because it really does give some good information we're just going to read a snippet of this but we're in the chapter that says military rule and we're going to be reading from a little bit of this so that you can get a better idea of what Rex 84 really is and what your government is getting ready for and what the Department of Defense and all those other alphabet soups are funding behind your back with your tax money because last I checked taxes are unconstitutional but oh well the Zionists don't care because you never had rights to begin with but let's keep going it says this is only a test repeat and we've been seeing many tests from FEMA haven't we with all the national emergency alert system tests and everything what do you think they're testing for but let's keep going it says while improving capabilities to respond to civil security emergencies was for the most part a planning activity and with the rate Reagan administration, FEMA was also active in exercises to test these plans. What plans? In 1981, FEMA and the Department of Defense, more alphabet soups, began a continuing tradition of biannual joint exercises to test civilian mobilization, civil security, emergency, and counterterrorism plans using names such as Proud Saber or Rex 82, Pre-Nest, and Rex 84, Night Train. And wow, they were planning counterterrorism before so-called terrorism even arised. What does that tell you? But let's keep going. The Rex 84 Alpha X Plan or Readiness Exercise 1984 Exercise Plan indicates that FEMA in association with 34 other federal civil departments and agencies conducted a civil readiness exercise during April 5th to 13th, 1984. It was conducted in coordination and simultaneously with the Joint Chiefs Exercise Night Train 84, a worldwide military command post exercise including continental U.S. forces or CONUS based on multi-emergency scenarios operating both abroad and at home. In the combined exercise Rex 84 Bravo, FEMA and DOD led the other federal agencies and departments including the Central Intelligence Agency or the CIA, the Secret Service, the Treasury, the Federal Bureau of Investigation or the FBI, more alphabet soups, and the Veterans Administration through a gaming exercise to test military assistance and civil defense. Did you hear that to test military assistance in civil defense why would they do that are they turning against the american citizens are they turning against people period of course they are just look at venezuela let's keep going the exercise anticipated civil disturbances major demonstrations and strikes that would affect continuity of government and or resource mobilization 
Is that why the elite and those Zionists such as George Soros, is that why they're funding all of these rioters and these protesters with the whole 2016 elections, which is just one great big joke to begin with? Is that why they're doing that? Very interesting and suspicious indeed. Then it goes on to say, to fight subversive activities, there was authorization for the military to implement government-ordered movements of civilian populations at state and regional levels, the arrest of certain unidentified segments of the population, and the what in position of martial law did you hear that have you looked up all the executive orders that your lovely presidents have signed into office all of which are unconstitutional by the way because many of them say that your government has the so-called right to relocate you into fema camps or into detention centers prison camps come martial law come during a state of emergency which we've been seeing these past couple of days are you ready for this stuff are you ready to stand in that evil day that is the question or are you lollygagging and thinking that this is all one big game and that this is all one big joke? I hope not. Now, what's also no surprise is how we're seeing the elite and the Zionists and how they're continuing to push for this big agenda and how they're trying to do all this stuff before Mr. Obama is supposed to leave office because we know darn well that Mr. Obama is going nowhere. He's going to stay right where he is. The elections is just one great big sham if you already haven't figured it out. But it's interesting because it was reported today, actually, and I'm going to leave the link below, actually, because there was a petition that was requested for the United Nations to monitor monitor the remaining 2016 presidential elections due to what they consider election fraud, which of course reminds us of the movie Amerigeddon, where the United Nations takes over once martial law is declared in America. Not a surprise whatsoever. And earlier I talked about more of, of course, the zombie apocalypse and the zombie response team. I'm going to leave the link below, Complan 8888, so you can see that yes, your government is preparing for zombie apocalypse. That is exactly what they're doing. Who are they classifying? as these different zombies because they have chicken zombies and they even have veggie zombies. What are they getting ready for? But if you would like to, you could look more at the link on your own time or you could just watch my video on zombie apocalypse and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But I'm here at the text of the National Emergency Centers Establishment Act that was a bill introduced back in January 22nd, 2009 in the House of Representatives at the 111th Congress first session. And I've talked about this in many of my other videos, but the reason I keep bringing this up is because I want to keep reiterating it to you and keep reminding you that yes your government and the Department of Defense and the Homeland Security what they are doing is that not only are they funding these so-called emergency centers courtesy FEMA and all those other alphabet soups not only are they doing that but they're legally trying to do these things but they're also using them to put you into these FEMA camps and that is exactly what they're doing but they're establishing these draconian acts establishing these draconian laws because they're trying to lock down the nation remember problem reaction solution. They cause the problems by causing these riots and causing these civil disturbances that they initiate to begin with. And then as a solution to these things, then is when they bring in the military because newsflash, Venezuela is coming to America literally because soon enough they're going to turn off all the banks, they're going to turn off all the ATMs so that you can no longer get money and they're going to turn off all the food so that you can no longer get food from the stores. Food is no longer going to be accessible. Water is no longer going to be accessible in America and I wouldn't be surprised if they turn off all the electricity so that you can no longer turn on the lights at nighttime. What do you think is going to happen when people cannot get their food and drinks and water from the stores? What do you think is going to happen? There's going to be rioting and that's exactly what the government wants. That's exactly what your military wants because then they could use that as an excuse to lock down the nation, declare martial law, and declare civil unrest. And that is what they've been planning for. That is what they've been preparing for. That is what they're getting ready for, folks. You can see it with the Jade Helm and the UX drills. They've been vehemently pushing this stuff and preparing this stuff as well as funding these emergency centers in case of national emergencies. Why do they keep mentioning national emergencies if everything is okay according to them? There's somebody who's lying to you and it's time you see the truth for what it really is.
because as I have said earlier, your government and military have been putting it in front of your face what they're getting ready for. But the question is, are you paying attention? Because I'm here at an unclassified document from your lovely army, by the way, and it even says Army Regulation 210-35 Installations Civilian Inmate Labor Program. And you may be wondering what this is. We're going to go over some of it together, and I'll leave the link below so you can read it on your own time. But basically, in a nutshell, this document, what not only talks talks about how the military and the army are using these bases and these military bases and they're going to be converting them into prison but they're not just going to be converting them into prisons. Well, the question you should be thinking about is who are these civilian inmates that they're talking about? But let's keep going. As you can see, here's the actual document. It's unclassified. It comes from the headquarters of the Department of the Army from Washington, D.C. back on January 14th of 2005. And let's keep going. It gives the summary of it. We're going to go to the next page, which talks about the program and gives the summary of it. And we'll read the summary together. And as you see, it says, this regulation provides guidance for establishing and managing civilian inmate labor programs on army installations. It provides guidance on establishing prison camps on army installations. It addresses record keeping and reporting incidents related to the civilian inmate labor program and or prison camp administration. And like I said earlier, who do you think these prisoners are? Who are they talking about? Are they just talking about prisoners who commit felonies? No, they are not. Not only that, but I've also gone over this in my wall Walmart video, and I'll definitely reiterate it right now, but what are they really doing? They're converting all of these things into FEMA camps, and they're literally converting these bases into FEMA camps, but not only are they converting the military bases into FEMA camps, they also have underground tunnels, and that's something else that I would like to really talk about more right now. Because these underground tunnels will be used to transport dissidents into FEMA camps, literally. Because think about it this way. Let's just say a national emergency just so happened and then the state regulators tell you that, oh, you have to go underground in order to avoid another so-called threat. Will you take their orders? Will you listen to them? Or will you see the warning signs ahead of time? My hope is that you will see the warning signs ahead of time and see exactly what they're getting ready for and see that they're leading you to the slaughter house literally. Now here's chapter one of that same document and like I said I'll leave the link below so you can see it but this is the introduction and as you see we'll go over the purpose but it says this regulation provides army policy and guidance for establishing civilian inmate labor programs and civilian prison camps on army installations. Sources of civilian inmate labor are limited to on and off post federal corrections facilities, state and or local corrections facilities operating on from on post prison camps pursuant to leases under under Section 2667, Title 10, the U.S. Code 10 U.S.C. 2667, and off-post state corrections facilities participating in the demonstration project authorized under Section 1065, Public Law, or PL 103-337. Otherwise, state and or local inmate labor from off-post corrections facilities is currently excluded from this program. Well, when you think about the terrorism agenda and why they're pushing this agenda, has it ever occurred to you why they're pushing this agenda? Agenda. Have you ever wondered why they're pushing this agenda? Because you could be a terrorist if you're watching this video right now. You could be a political dissident if you're even speaking against the government or know of the New World Order, even though Mr. George H.W. Bush talked about the New World Order on TV exactly 11 years before 9-11. Is that a coincidence? But if you even know about any of this stuff, you could be deemed a political dissident from your government. You could be deemed suspicious, and you could be a suspicious terrorist, and they're going to have to detain you and you could become a civilian inmate is this is what they're getting ready for is that why you're seeing everything is it starting to make sense now i hope so the report then goes on to talk about some of the responsibilities pursuant to the Assistant Secretary of the Army and how they will provide policy guidance and resolve policy issues, as well as providing overall program direction and serving as approval authority for establishing the civilian inmate labor programs and civilian inmate prison camps on Army installations. Did you hear that? And we already talked about Rex 84 and how they've already done tests and conducted tests and drills and scenarios of martial law to be declared when 
national emergencies take place, which is why they've even established these National Emergency Centers Acts, as we saw with H.R. 645. I hope it's making sense now. Now, what's also interesting about this document is Chapter 4, where it talks about reporting and record keeping and how they keep records of all of the civilian inmates and how they not only keep records of them, but they report every single thing that they're doing. Kind of sounds like surveillance to me, doesn't it? Just like how your government is surveilling your every walk, your every footstep, your every move, your every breath, literally, because every step you make, every move you make, and every breath you take, your government is documenting it courtesy these fusion centers. Is the military doing the same thing through these police states? Are they doing the same thing through these military camps and these military bases that they're going to convert into detention centers? Of course, because what control, world control, and world domination? That is the goal of the new world order. Now, the Army document also talked about the different governing provisions and the procedures and the inmates who they classify and deem as the inmates, but we're also going to go over this document, and I've talked about it many of times, but I also want to reiterate it once again, but it's called FM 3-39.40, which is Internment and Resettlement Operations that was released in February of 2010, and this is, of course, from the Department of the Army. What exactly are they getting ready for? Now, although this document is over over 300 pages, I highly recommend all of you to read it on your own time because what you're going to see is that this document not only blueprints, graphs, and charts all of the different prisons and detainees that your army, military, and your government are preparing for, but they give out the entire map and they blueprint everything for you. It's right in front of your face. And for those of you who think this is a hoax or think that, oh, it's fake, I honestly don't know what to tell you. But I'm here at chapter four and it says capture initial detention and screening. Because what you'll find is that they have an entire system of how they want to transport and detain all of their so-called detainees and how they want to do it. They have it all mapped out, ready to go in this one document from the army, from your lovely military. But here I am in chapter four, and it even says methods of transportation and how they even plan on taking detainees to these prisons, which are going to go to with the military bases that they're converting into these prisons. And as you can see, they even have graphs and they even show maps of it, but they say foot, they even say wheeled vehicles, they even say buses, and they even show you the different guards that are going to be on these buses with the detainees in them in the figures. They even show you the cargo truck transport and how they're going to be transported through cargo trucks as well. Is that why we're seeing all these trucks? And they even show rails as well. Is that why people are seeing you in railways and uh, rail cars as well? Is that what they're getting ready for? As well as helicopters as well. What are they getting ready for? You even see the detainees here with guards surrounding them. What is the bigger agenda here? They even show you how they're going to be moving detainees via airplanes because here I am at 4-61 and this shows you via movement with airplanes and as you can see the D right here if you look at the actual table right here or the legend you see D represents detainees so that is the detainees right here in this area and over here is most likely going to be the guards in the airplanes as well. Why are they even showing us? Why do they even need to be showing us these things? What is the bigger agenda here? In Chapter 5, in Table 5-1, they even tell you the major functions performed from the military police and how they're going to process and restrain and control the detainee and conduct liaison with military and civilian agencies and even transfer custody and maintain accountability of the detainee evidence and property as well as collect biometric information like the RFID chip. Is that why we're seeing that? Why do they even mention this in this document here? Huh, very interesting and suspicious indeed. Indeed. And like I said, my sole purpose for all of this is to show you what time it really is as well as wake you up to truth and wake you up to what time we're really living in and what your government and military are preparing for. That is the sole purpose of this. And I hope you're seeing this with both your eyes open because here I am in chapter six and we're in 6-8, which even talks about some of how they're going to plan these facilities and how they're going to use clear zones, guard towers, lights, patrol roads, sally ports, and communications. Haven't we been seeing structures that sort of look like guard towers? Very interesting. What are they going to be using them for? 
Now chapter six goes on to talk about many of the graphs and tables of how they're going to not only plan and stage these detainees, but where they're going to place them and all of the medical and dental support that's going to come with it and just their plans on detaining them in these places and the facilities that they're going to be placed in according to them. And they also talk more about it as well in chapter five. But I wanted to turn your attention to table 6-1, which is their nine station internment process, which as you can see, the first part is to search, which is done by the military police and they're to assign each detainee an ISN to replace the DD form 2745 number so of course they have to spy and surveil on you even more then they have a uh, personal hygiene so they do allow you to shower shave and get haircuts and then they go on to talk about medical evaluations interesting why would they need to do that and then personal items they're the ones who issue the personal idols why did they need to do that then it goes on to talk about administrative things but it also even talks about biometric collection and that they even collect fingerprints in everything else why would they need to do that and even using facial recognition to digitally upload photographs into the DRS. Why would they need to be doing that? This document blueprints and highlights everything. Your army's literally telling you what they're getting ready for because I'm here in Appendix J and they even show you different maps and graphs and outlines of the so-called detention camps and centers and they even show you the double barbed wire fence which you can see right here and they even show you the different guard towers. Why would they even need to do that? Why would they even need to show you all of that? But Appendix H even talks about about how order must be restored using the least amount of force possible and even says that your police and law enforcement and your military can even use force and riot baton uses in times of rioting and civil unrest. Why would they even need to do that is the question. I hope you're seeing the bigger agenda. Please seek Yahuwah and his true son Yahusha because as you can see they've been planning this for a long time. The question is can you see it but this is Truth Unveiled here saying Shalom.